Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today we have a couple of the fellows from Written Industries here. We have Thomas and Kent uh, from Written. Uh, there's Thomas and then we also have Chris here. He is from Coastal Manufacturing Solutions. Uh, Chris is actually providing a couple of the tools that we're using today on our Miltronics uh, CNC lathe to do this operation. But uh, what we want to share with you is I have one of the new, or new to me anyway, the uh, face driving systems for our Miltronic CNC lathe. And um, I got it set up on the, on the lathe here and the fellows from uh, Written Industries come down here and they are helping me to make sure that I've got it set up properly on the machine and that we're, we're actually, you know, I understand how it's used and that it's set up properly and we're doing some test cuts over here to uh, make sure everything is, is good to go. This is a brand new uh, tool to me that I have never used before, so face driving technology is new to me. I know the old school way of turning between centers using a laid dog, uh, but this uh, type of system right here is, uh, is pretty fascinating for me since it's new, but it's a really great tool to, uh, to use for, uh, especially like high manufacturing, high quality manufacturing, high, you know, uh, production runs, uh, turning between centers so that you can turn a a shaft or a part from end to end without the need of a second operation. So we've got it set up in the Miltronics. I'm going to show you the component parts that we have uh, for this. We have it set up, show you what it consists of, and we got a couple other tools here that we're going to talk about. And then we actually have uh, some shafts that we're running, and we'll get some video of it in use and showing the, um, the, the face driving tool in operation and how we're going to be using it. So I'm going to come over here to the lathe now and show you what we've got going on and show you the uh, components from Written Industries that we're using. So this is the face driver right here. And then we also have a spring loaded center here as well. Uh, this one is a four Morse taper for our tailstock. And the reason why we're using a spring loaded center is because we have a manually operated tailstock for the lathe here. They have other types of centers that will be used for machines that have automatic tail stocks that you use the machine to set the controller. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But so the, uh, the system that I have, this is a Type 43. We'll take a look in the catalog so you can see. They make these in a wide range of sizes. So it depends on your application, uh, what diameter the material that you're going to be turning, what type of material, the length of the material and all that they can help you set up the proper size tools that you need for your machine, for your CNC lathe. But this uh, kit here consists of the adapter plate for the, uh, for the spindle nose that we have. A, A15, I believe, is the, is the size that I have. All right, then it comes with the spindle nose here with the center. It has a center point in there, and then we have mine comes with the three drive pins in here, okay? They have them, depending on what type we have, you have a five pin, six pin, and uh, different sizes here. So we already have all this set up. You've got to get this installed. You have to indicate it and get it running true before you use it. That's a very important step, which I've already done. And then of course we got our tailstock, I'm, tailstock spring-loaded center. 
and you can see these different color rings here. We have a red, green, and a yellow. That is so that you can get the right amount of pressure applied with the tailstock using the handle there in the right in the correct range of pressure so that it it uh, pull, pushes in on these drive pins here. All right, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. They have got another tool here that they brought with them uh, so that we can actually set it up on the tailstock here and and actually see the amount of pressure, the force, should I say, that we're applying on the center. So let's go over there to the bench and check out that pressure gauge. All right, so here is uh, here is their gauge that they uh, that they keep with them and they take with them to whenever they're helping the customer set up these face drivers and make sure that the, the right amount of pressure is applied to the tailstock because you do have to have a certain amount of pounds of force pushing on your workpiece into the drive pins. So this is just a really cool tool that they can set up. You've got uh, a couple of Morse taper adapters in there. You have a straight um, adapter in there and you can put this in your tailstock and you, you can use this as a way to measure the pounds of force on that. And that's what we did earlier. We had that set up and um, it was a good way of using this because of you manually tightening up the tailstock. We went to a thousand pounds of force and then 1500 and 2000. And that way we could get a good feel when we're tightening up the tailstock there uh, using our spring loaded center, making sure that we actually had the right amount of force on that. So if you guys invest in, in uh, one of the uh, written industries face drivers, they will, uh, come to your facility and help you get it set up, make sure that the tailstock is applying the right amount of force to, to use this system. Okay, so what we have is a hydraulic pressure gauge here installed in the tailstock. And what we're doing is that we're gonna apply some pressure to the workpiece. We're gonna use this. And what this is gonna do is uh, show the workpiece being pushed into the drive pins here and the first time we're going to go up to a thousand on the pressure gauge and we'll take the workpiece out and then measure the depth of the engagement of the dry pins to see how deep they are and then we're going to set it back in there and uh, we'll probably go up to about 15 or 1600 and then check it and check our depth there so we're going to go ahead and run her in there All right, so that's just using the, uh, the manual force on the tailstock hand wheel there. And we've got a thousand. Now, what is this? Is this a thousand uh, pounds of force? Yep. Okay. And then we'll take it out and we're gonna check our depth of the, uh, the drive pins there. So we just removed the workpiece. This is uh, being applied with a thousand pounds of force. You can see the three marks there from our drive pins and I don't think this is gonna be deep enough, so we're gonna go back in there, we'll apply more pressure, and then we're actually gonna see if we can measure the depth of the uh, marks from the drive pins. All right, we got our workpiece back in there. We're gonna apply a little more pressure to the uh, tailstock quill again. We're gonna take this one up to, where we're gonna go, 15, 15. 1500. And you can see that it's really taking some force on the hand wheel to get it there. 15, so we're gonna pull it back out and uh, check our witness marks there from the drive pins. All right, so we've uh, swapped it around and we're gonna go up to uh, 2,000 pounds of force this time. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead with it. <laughs> it's getting pretty, pretty tight, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Okay, so there's our 2,000 pounds. So we're, doing, we're gonna do the same thing as uh, just visually check our uh, drive pin depth there on our witness marks. All right, so here's the here's the end that we just applied uh, 2,000 pounds of force to, and you can see the three witness marks there. And that looks about right where it should be on the engagement of the drive pins. And then once you actually make the first pass across the workpiece with the tool, these are gonna be even deeper than that and, and should have proper engagement uh, for the turning process there. Now this is a, a sample that they brought with them so that we could just share. This is a just one example of a component that you can machine using the, um, the face driver tool, okay? So this component here, now this was made on a lathe that has live tooling. And what they were showing is that you can utilize that face driving system to index it 
to be, if you want to come in here and do like they did, they've got these flutes machined in here, okay? But just a, a really good example of taking apart and machining it from one end to the other in one operation. And you can turn multiple directions when you're machining parts using this, but uh, the important thing to remember is that when you, when you make your very first cut with your workpiece, you need to cut a, uh, to the spindle because that helps seat the drive dogs in the material. And then once you do that, then you can make, you can turn each direction there. All right, but pretty cool example of uh, one of the one of the parts that you can make. Um, it's really it's really helpful for many industries out there, especially in the automotive industry. If you ever look at parts that go into an automobile, maybe different axles and things like that. If you look at the end of the shaft and you see those uh, those lines that are pressed into the face, that's because it was turned on a uh, face driver system, like from uh, Written Industries. So as I had mentioned, they make these face driving tools in many different sizes, so it really depends on your application. So if this is something that you're interested in, if you will contact Written Industries, they will help you size up the, the proper tooling that you need for your needs. They make them in a various sizes, of uh, spindle sizes, including Morse taper and straight shank as well. And we have, we're running the Type 43. So that gives you kind of the, uh, the, the range, but you can, uh, you can get these guys in many different sizes. There's a lot of different sizes here. I'm not gonna go over all that, but uh, basically if you can get with them and tell them the uh, type of material, the length and your machine, they can set you up with the proper parts that you need. One other interesting thing that I was gonna point out we can do with ours is uh, our flange mount there. We can actually take that and go to our manual lathe if we want to and chuck this up in a chuck or you can you can bore soft jaws however you want to chuck it in your three or four jaw and you can actually run this in your manual lathe as well so that's pretty exciting and I, and I look forward to being able to do that uh, later on in our manual lathe there so these are the shafts that we're running right here all right that's a that's a finished shaft from end to end and these are half 28 threads on this end and we have just different diameters that we've cut in there and so this is our sample part that we're going to be uh, machining here using the uh, Written Industries face driving tool. So we'll, uh, we'll set up another piece and get going on that. I did want to touch briefly on their live center repair as well. So this is a live center that I had that had a burned up spindle nose on the end of it. Their center nose was burned up and I sent this to them. They gave me a quote. I had them rebuild that. And as long as your, your live center is, if your shell here is in good condition, they'll replace the, uh, the spindle, the bearings, the grease, and the seals, and that kind of stuff. Or, and if you need to, they'll, they will uh, regrind it there as well. So this is one that I just recently got back from them. I love these types of uh, live centers here with the extended nose. They're extremely helpful on the lathe when you're getting into your small diameter. So keep that in mind. If you got some bad life centers, contact them and uh, they will hook you up and repair your life centers for you. They will repair any brand of life center. It doesn't have to be the uh, Written Industries brand. So if you have one of their competitor brands that are damaged that needs repair, send it to them. They will give you a quote on repairing these. And I believe if you decide that you don't want to repair it, they will give you a credit towards the purchase of one of their uh, brand new life centers. This is a couple of the pins. So this is the center for the uh, the face driver right there. That's going to be your center. And then these are what the drive pins look like for mine right here. Okay. So let's go over there and get a shaft installed and see this thing in operation. All right, we're going to get another shaft set up in here. I've, I finally got this thing um, set up and, we're, and we're, we're making some good chips and a good part there. I did want to point out that uh, Chris had brought uh, he's got a couple tools that we're running. So one of them is the uh, Carmex threading tool, I believe. So that's this guy right here. That's what we're gonna use for doing our threading. And then the turning tool is the, uh, the Permet brand. And uh, it's the DNMG 300 series, I believe is the, that's the uh, insert that we're running right there. So we're gonna use this to turn it and then we'll use the Carmex uh, threading tool to do the threading there. All right, so let's get one loaded up. So what we're running here is uh, some two inch diameter 4140. It's been prefaced and centered on the ends, by the way. So we already did that. All right, so this, the center on the face driver is spring loaded. 
So as you apply pressure, it's going to be pushing that center in, okay? And then what, what, what I want to do is actually get it installed, and we'll take it back out so you guys can see, we can see the end of the shaft and the, um, the witness marks on there. That's what you have to do is um, get a feel for the visual reference of proper engagement on these work pieces because you got to have enough uh, pressure against it to be able to drive it. So I just hang it on the uh, spring-loaded center here on the, on the face driver side and then hold it up. And I'm going to reach around you on the back of the tailstock and bring this in just gently so I don't stab the end of the shaft with the point. All right. All right. So I, I want you guys to see right here. I'm going to start cranking the handle, the hand wheel on the, the tailstock, and we're going to push it into the drive pins. All right. So now they're engaged. We're going to come back down here to the spring loaded center so you can see how much force that we're applying. Okay. So on our live center side, as I said, this is a spring loaded center. We have this three ring color uh, gauge here that helps indicate the foot pounds of force that you're applying to the workpiece. So if we back you out here, we've got this little chart that you can reference and it shows the yellow, green and uh, orange, reddish color um, rings that's on the, the live center there. And it shows the uh, pounds of force that you're applying in a, in a size range right there. So on our workpiece, we're gonna be, we're gonna be working right up to where the green and the uh, the red meet. And it depends on the size of the uh, Morse taper that you're running there as well. We're running a number four Morse taper. So we're gonna be, so 1350 to around 2470 uh, pounds of force that we're applying to our workpiece. And that's uh, where I was showing earlier that hydraulic uh, pressure gauge that we had set up in the tailstock there. And we were actually able to uh, put that pressure range on there and take the workpiece out and be able to visually look at the, uh, the witness marks on the ends from the drive pins to know that we're actually applying the right amount of force. And you got to get this right because you got to have, for one, you got to have enough pressure so it doesn't spin. But also if you have too much pressure, you can cause damage to the center, the headstock, or start warping your workpiece depending on the diameter of that. All right. So let's go ahead and get this guy tightened up so you can see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to start cranking in on the handle and you'll see this moving. All right. So now we're getting into the green shade and I'm going to come up just to where it starts touching the red. So right about there. Okay. And then once you have it, have it there, we'll go ahead and we'll lock the quill in. And from there we're ready to turn. And as I said before, you got to start, your first cut always needs to start and go towards the face driver or towards the spindle so that it seats the drive pins in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this guy out so you guys can see the witness marks there. And we're gonna use that as a visual reference. And I'll get you guys out of here so you can see it, but there's our um, three witness marks on the end of the shaft there. All right, guys, so this is the end of the shaft here that we just pulled out. We just tightened up and we pulled it out so that you can see the uh, witness marks there from the three drive pins. And what you want on this is three to five thousandths of engagement there whenever you apply the, uh, the pressure to it. So if you can come in here and uh, catch that with your fingernail, that should, that should be about right. And once you start making your first cut on that, it's really going to seat well into those drive pins and you're going to have a more pronounced mark there at that point. So this is looking good right where it's at there. We're going to go ahead and uh, put it back in the lathe so that we can start making our cuts. All right, guys, let's get her closed up and start our first cuts. Now I am going to try to get some better video of this after this uh, first shaft right here, but uh, we'll just get this going because what I'd like to do is actually make we're gonna make our first pass on it and I'm gonna pull this back out so that we can uh, visually look at your witness marks uh, on this side, that's, that's gonna be our first cut. Witness mark on this side is the ones I just showed you, okay, without it being cut yet. So we'll close this guy up and uh, hit cycle start. Our program is proven out, so we should be ready to go.
Sorry about that glare. I know it's, it's coming off the skylight there. A little tricky to get your shots outside of the machine just because of the glare there. All right, I'm gonna stop that. All right, we've got our feet hold all the way down to zero. So I'm going to halt and stop it. I'm just gonna go ahead and exit out of that. And let's take it out so that we can actually see that uh, the witness marks for that first pass there. All right, so here's a, a little better look at the end of the shaft. So this is after making the, uh, the first pass across it. That's just a roughing pass, by the way, but uh, making that first pass, it helps seat it into the drive pins there, and you can kind of see it. You can see them a little better, and you can definitely catch them with your fingernail. All right, and if we flip it over, this is the side that we, uh, you know, applied the pressure to without taking the cut, and you can see they're not, it's not fully seated. So it's just an important step to make whenever you set your workpiece up that you always make that first cut against the, um, the face driver to get it to get it seated properly, okay? All right, we're back in the machine. We're back to doing some cutting. Did want to point out, this is material we're using is two inch, so it's a little larger than what we really needed, but it's what we had, and uh, we just wanted some good stuff to uh, do, this, um, do this demonstration with. So we're using the uh, DNMG tool there to rough it. We got that set at, uh, set at 18 thousandths per revolution, so a pretty aggressive feed rate there, but uh, we're only removing about 100 thousandths of pass. That tool's doing a good job on this turning here. All right, this is gonna be our final roughing pass. And then it's gonna uh, switch tools to another that we'll use to make our finish pass on there. All right, here's going to be our finish pass. All right, that's gonna finish up our, our finish there. Now it's gonna retract. 
Swap over to our Carmex threading tool. We got it running 1500 RPM on this. It'll make about 16 passes, I believe, is what I counted. A half 28 thread is what we're machining here. All right, there we go. So this part, this particular one, we got a 10 minute and 22 second cycle time on that. This can definitely be improved. That's with me getting in there and doing some uh, tweaking on the feeds and speeds. We're also starting with a two inch material and then bringing it down to an uh, inch and a quarter there. But we got a good looking part, beautiful threads, all done end to end there using our Written Industries face driving tool. All right, let's take this guy out and, and uh, we'll get a little closer look at it. So I did index it. Boy, it looks like I had pretty well <laughs> evenly spaced. So hopefully you guys will be able to see a little bit of this, but you can see your witness marks there from the dry pins. That looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. This has got the right engagement that you want, um, the, the, the proper amount of force applied to the workpiece there so you don't have any problems with it spinning or anything like that. And the part looks pretty good. So, then as I mentioned, I, I got to do some more fine tuning on our feeds and speeds so that we can optimize this and, and, uh, and get maybe a little better finish on it and things like that. But I, I wanted to uh, share one of our shafts that we're turning in a, in a really great example of how we can use this uh, face driving tool in the lathe here. We talked about how on this particular application for me, we're looking for a depth on these drive pins to be somewhere in the range of three to five thousandths deep there. And once you get a feel for it, you can visually see that you're going to be deep enough. And especially if you come in here, you can catch those grooves with your fingernail. But another way that you can check those depths there is using the uh, Sterrett number 643 dial depth gauge. This has more of a knife, aid, knife edge ground on the bottom there and a conical point with a 40 degree included angle. And all you do is you simply set it on the surface and you push this down with your finger to measure the depth there. So that's what we're gonna do. But the first thing that I wanna do is take a stone and actually just kind of just lightly rub this to make sure that there's no burr sticking up there, especially on the edge of the face that's gonna give us a false reading. Just deburr it, that's all we're looking for. And the other thing you have to consider is that this, this material was faced off. So you do have tool marks in there that's gonna vary in depth depending on where you measure this. So you usually start off by getting this set to a zero. I use my granite surface plate, that's the best place to do it. And so I'm not in the groove, I'm right off to the next, uh, right next to the groove. And I want to make sure that it's calibrated near zero. So if you rock it, you can see it goes past zero just a little bit. That's because it depends on where I'm touching that face. It could be in a, a groove from a tool mark. That right there, it's pretty close to zero. So you have, I like to rock it because you got to get it sort of like top dead center, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and move it over so that the point goes into the groove. Get it down in there, all right? And then now we're gonna rock it. And it may be hard to see, but it looks like we're measuring right about three and a half thousandths on our depth on that particular groove right there, okay? So that's telling me that we actually have proper engagement of our dry pins. We're at the proper depth there, and this should work pretty good.
Well, I've turned a few of these shafts in the Miltronics, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the, uh, the face driving technology. Now, I know that face drivers is not brand new technology. I know that they've been out for quite some time, and Ritten has been manufacturing these for a while too. But it is a new to me technology that I've never seen uh, up close and personal until today in our shop. And uh, seeing how this is used is, is awesome. And I can really see the benefits in high volume, high end production. You know, if you've got part, if you've got a lot of these types of shafts that you've got to make, using a face driver tool is really going to help speed up the operation. And not only that, Using that when you drive between centers like that, you're ensuring that your parts have absolute concentricity throughout the entire shaft there. You know, uh, most times we have to remove it from the chuck or however you're holding it, flip it around, set it back up in there, and then you finish out the size and you always risk losing a little bit of that concentricity whenever you do that. So using a face driving tool where you can machine it from one face all the way to the other in one, out, in one operation is going to ensure that you have absolute concentricity all the way throughout that. So really great technology and it's, this has been great being able to, uh, to see this and learn it and hopefully we will be able to apply this to some of our work in the future there as well. So. Um, I want to give a thanks to the fellows there at Written Industries for coming out to the shop and helping me with this to not only ensure that I had it installed properly in the lathe there, but also to educate me on how to use the tools properly. They have a wide range of sizes for their face drivers, including the centers there for all different applications. So. We know that mine is a manual operated tailstock and that's why we're using the spring loaded center. And the spring loaded center has those rings on there so that you can gauge the proper amount of force that you're applying to your workpiece. And that amount of pressure is gonna vary depending on the material that you're using, the diameter that you're turning, and also the length there as well. There are perimeters that you have to fall within to be able to use a face driver efficiently there. But written makes uh, other types of centers there that's used for the face drivers as well. So you may have a machine that's servo driven, you know, the tailstock may be servo driven or even hydraulic driven, and they can come out to your facility. They will, whenever you purchase their face driving tools, they will come out to your shop and ensure that the machine is being set up, set up properly so that you don't have damage to either the center, the tailstock, or Worse yet, the, uh, the spindle on the machine there as well. You can overpressure it, which is gonna cause issues with bearings if you apply too much force to it. So that's where they have their hydraulic pressure uh, or force tool, should I say, where they can come out and ensure that the machine is actually applying the correct amount of force needed for that specific operation, all right? So really enjoyed being able to visit and hang out with them. I have been using Written Life Centers for well over 20 years now, and I've always thought that it was a really high quality, superior product. And you know, keep in mind that they don't just sell live and dead centers there. You know, they, have the, uh, they have the scroll chucks for Life Centers uh, as well. But if, they, if there's a tool that you don't see in their catalog, they will actually work with you directly to help design, engineer, and build a specific center that you need or a specific tool you need for your application. So they will work with you personally to give you that tool that you're looking for that you may not find in the catalog, but they have a lot of tools to offer there. So just about something for everybody out there. Uh, the other thing that I wasn't aware that they did is they, they actually do a repair business for a lot of their customers. So think, uh, shipyards, uh, steel industry, um, you know, marine industry, firearm industry. But what they were telling me as an example is, uh, you know, they have a customer that's got these big, gigantic lathes, you know, wartime machines that have huge tailstocks on them because they're turning prop shafts for aircraft carriers and ships, you know. Uh, but here one recently, he showed me a couple pictures of a spindle or a quill out of a tailstock that was 24 inches in diameter. And it had some damage on it and it had some damage to the taper there as well. So that's a service that they provide. They actually will take those quills or those spindles to their facility and they will rebuild them for their customer. So another great um, you know, service that Written Industries provides that I wasn't even aware of. 
I also want to give a thanks to Chris over at Coastal Manufacturing Solutions for coming out and uh, hanging out with us for the day. Uh, Chris provided, you know, he brought this, um, this Promet uh, turning tool and the carbide inserts there that we could use as a sample. And, uh, and they did a great job. So thank you, Chris, for that. Uh, keep in mind that Written Industries, they sell through uh, distributors. They don't sell direct to customers. So in the Southeast, they, they use Coastal Manufacturing Solutions, Chris over there. So if you're interested in um, uh, written products, you can contact Chris over there and uh, he can hook you up. He can come out and help you out. And he, he provides lots of other services there as well. So if you have other applications for your machine shop or your manufacturing, he's got a lot of uh, tools that he reps and he can, he can hook you up that as well. So uh, thank you, Chris, for coming and hanging out. It was a pleasure meeting you and thank you for the, uh, the turning tool there as well. It worked awesome. So I think that's gonna be it. Um, I really had a great time with uh, the guys at, at Ritten and also Chris. We, we really enjoyed just being able to hang out at the machine here and um, you know get this set up, get it turning and talk shop, you know? The, the other thing that you can keep in mind, I know I'm gonna have guys ask about this, is that can you use this in a manual lathe there as well? And the answer is yes. So the flange mount face driver that we have on the Miltronics, we can take that out and go over to our manual lathe and chuck that in a four jaw chuck and get it indicated and use it just like you do here in the, in the CNC machine as well. Or you can take a scroll chuck and put soft jaws on it and uh, you know, bore the soft jaw so that it, so that it holds the, the flange mount there as well. So yes, if you invest in that tool, you can use it in both your CNC and your manual lathe there as well. So keep that in mind, all right? So I think that's it. We're gonna wrap this up and um, Big thanks to Ritten for coming out and uh, making sure that I was using the new tools correctly. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. Maybe you got something out of that. And we will see you again very soon.